It's Dr. Bail Abad joining us, senior independent journalist. Uh, Dr. Abad, uh, you know, when we are talking about the path forward out of here, all of that, I guess, has to be weighed against the, the images of death and destruction that we are seeing, uh, you know, out of Gaza right now, and the very real anger that there is both in Israel uh, about the October 11, uh, 7 attacks and also what uh, in, in the Arab world about the death and destruction that we are seeing in Gaza. Thank you, Vikram. I think it's getting more uh, serious and a catastrophe by all the meaning of the word because uh, such a small concentration camp keeping all these people under continuous bombardment. I don't think Hiroshima have received this much of bombs. Neither Ukraine received it nor Iraq or Afghanistan all throughout the years where the American kept on throwing these bombs. So having said that, I would say the situation is very grim. All hospitals, most of them are out of order. Most of our colleagues who are also, we lost more than 23, 24 journalists. We also losing hospitals, um, uh, schools, everything, every human being moving, uh, people moving from the north to the south are also being attacked. So I think the world, uh, it is a shame on the international community that they are unable to put an end to this uh, human catastrophe. Dr. Awad, as you're speaking to analysts everywhere in the world, what are you picking up? What, for example, are the chances that this is going to broaden, in which case things could get a lot worse very, very fast? We've already had Yemen declaring war on Israel, which is presumably neither here or there. But do you see this widening? Do you see uh, Egypt or Lebanon or Syria, God forbid, even Iran, getting involved in some way directly in this conflict? I think it's getting out of control. Uh, the amount of killing is so much that even the Arab streets are angry. Even in London, where we are, the people are angry in Europe and the United States. It's not a war. It's just a genocide. So let us uh, find out if this continue. I'm sure this will Let expand. And there is already a skirmish attack on the northern part, uh, southern part of Lebanon uh, with Israel forces. And then also we have the uh, Yemeni yeah, Houthis are taking part. So that shows the anger in the street, uh, Bikram. And I don't see it as going to stop here because uh, the main objective is to involve uh, Hezbollah in Lebanon and Iran in this war because we have enough warships in, in the Mediterranean from U.S., from Germany, from France, from England. So everybody join forces. I mean, within a short notice, but they have not even uh, taken any step to bring peace to the Middle East for the last 75 years. So having said that, I would say that the changing of the, the geopolitical dynamic of this war will be devastated uh, temporarily, uh, I mean, uh, mid uh, 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 um, impact, and there will be long-term impact because investor will have difficulties, there's no stability, so nobody will buy fish in the water. Dr. Abad, one last question. You know, many people here in India are trying to figure out how they should deal with this, what this impact this has on IMEC and those other strategic plans that India has had for West Asia and for the Middle East. What would be your sense and what would be the advice you would be giving to any, any partners you're speaking to here in India? Well, I think India, the, the South Bloc have done their own uh, jobs, whether it was during the war on Syria. I remember Mr. Hardy Puri at the uh, the re permanent representative at the UN, how he was handling the situation. I have done his book also. But the only uh, problem currently is that there are people, I'm sorry to say, but there is no advisor in West Asian affairs to the, to, the, to the Indian government. Therefore, what is being seen at the Arab world now, that India is only discussing uh, maybe part of the Palestinian issue because of Hamas, what they have done. That's fine. We all understand the anger in the world, the global anger and support. That's fine. But I think with India keeping a tight rope and a balance between the two, India has to reach out to most of the Arab capital and act, discuss the India position because it's taken for granted that India is not going to, you know, sabotage or not. India will, will really uh, walk away from the Palestinian cause because India fought for the freedom. Uh, Nelson Mandela for the freedom. It's an apartheid regime which is put, imposing on the Palestinian. So India is a, one of the major power adhered to the to, to, to international law and UN Charter. So I feel, and my, I, my argument with my, my, my other Arabs where I go in discussion, I say, no, there's nothing changed in Indian position. It just, we need to see it in depth and in analysis. It may be a historical mistake. Some people say that India did not abstain from voting. Well, there are other issues where India can step in to do, to do the, uh, the needful. But I think uh, currently India has to play a major role. And everybody said that India should sideline. That's absolutely wrong. India has to take the lead. 
India have a stake in the, uh, the, the expatriate living in the Gulf country. You have more than 8 million people there. So you have a revenue of more than $75 billion annually coming from. You have 14 million Indian annually in GCC country. And you have the oil security, they have food security, and now you are coming with the IMEC, which is the corridor. So why India can't play? I don't understand why India can't tell them, stop this war. We are a democracy. Our people are angry. War should not be the option. Peace should be the strategic option, and let us work for that life. I, I think that's the only position India can take. It's the largest democracy in the world, and they can raise their voice above the, the North Bloc, which is showing so much of anger and refusing even to stop the halting this attack on, on, on Palestine, on Gaza, or West Bank, and Jerusalem. Vikram, it's not only Gaza. It's Jerusalem, is uh, West Bank, where people are suffering. So we have to see what is the main objective. I think this is depth, the reading of history, of the conflict and the outcome of it will give us more reasonable and wise approach to the solution, to the problem of two-state solution. At the end of the day, no war, even the American accepted in Iraq and Afghanistan, in Libya and Yemen, that no war can achieve your political objective. So let's go and sit down across the table. Two-state solution is the best and apply the International Union Security Council resolution. And that's all. All right, Dr. Abad, thank you so much for joining us with that view. Thank you.